If you are using GarageBand, you have the same exact compressors that are in Logic. Today, what I wanna do is go around the whole list, identify those compressors for you. I'm gonna show you exactly what those compressors are emulating as far as the real units, the real rack gear, and, uh, and want you to understand that you have these compressors available to you, but it's sort of a mystery. What are they really? I figured it out, and I'm gonna be teaching you all about it today, showing you the real units, telling you what they're good for, and uh, showing you what they look like in Logic, and in general, giving you a better understanding of the seven different compressors that GarageBand comes with. All right, so we're gonna start inside of a GarageBand project, and I'm gonna show you how to locate those compressors. To get to the list of seven compressors, come down here into the plugins list where you see the word compressor. This is just a preset for the drums. Click on the compressor, and we're coming up here and we're looking for compressor by type, this one right here. When you're looking at this list, you should understand that these subcategories, so classic, FET, opto, platinum, type R, type U, and VCA, those are the seven different compressors, okay? So let's start at the top, the classic drums. So once you open this up, what you should know is you are opening an emulation of the DBX160. This is considered to be one of the best drum compressors ever built. The original DBX160 has a really proven track record. It's famous for its vintage character and aggressive punch. It's also a very simple compressor to use. It has a tight and fast response, and it's the perfect tool for crushing groups and buses or injecting subtle fatness to everything from guitars to vocals. You can use the classic VCA to inject a warm and grainy punch to your sounds. It's really effective for beefing up bass, synths, guitars, and especially drums. It's really known for bringing out that knock and thwack of drum sounds, especially on kicks, snares, and claps. Next on the list, we're gonna go to the FET compressor. And inside of Logic, this is called the Vintage FET. The Vintage FET emulates the Universal Audio 1176 Rev H, it's the silver face one. This is really famous for lending its character and punch to some of the most famous recordings of all time. The 1176 has become an absolutely essential tool found in pretty much every professional recording studio. It's another one, it's got super fast attack and release times. They're ideal for taming drums, enhancing bass or guitars, also really great for making vocals shine. The Vintage FET's aggressive sound delivers a sense of energy that adds brightness and presence to anything that runs through it. When driven hard, it can add some of the desired edge to your drums. And I'm gonna talk about how to drive these compressors a little bit harder at the very end of this video. But the 1176, the silver face one, uh, also has a really distinctive sound. So even if you wanna just turn this on and not use it as a compressor, but really just as something to add a little bit of tone, that is something you can do with this particular one. You don't have to use it simply as you see the preset here as a bass thing. You can literally just turn this on and it adds a little bit of analog, simulated analog tone. So now let's go down to the next one and we're gonna be looking at an optical compressor. So again, I'm just opening up opto bass, but really what you should understand is that I'm opening up an optical compressor. The vintage opto emulates the Teletronics LA-2A optical compressor. For over 50 years, the Teletronics LA-2A has been revered for its smooth, natural musical compression. Top artists, engineers, and producers prize its ability to work its magic on anything that you throw it. However, the LA-2A is most famous for treating vocals. It's really difficult to make this particular compressor sound bad. This optical compressor is something you should all be using for vocals. At least give it a shot and see what it sounds like. It's really good at that. It also has a vintage personality. It can apply subtle transparent compression or push it really hard to introduce sizzling overdrive that sounds amazing on bass, drums, and guitar. So this is a great one for vocals and guitar. I use this guy a lot for those things, but this is a fabulous compressor and the real deal is awesome. And it's awesome that we have it in GarageBand. Now, next on the list, okay? We're gonna keep going down here. So now we're getting to the Platinum compressor. This model is actually Apple's native digital compressor, completely developed by the Apple guys. It has a very, very transparent sound. 
and the transient response is clean and super fast. Furthermore, the Platinum Digital works great on just about any sound. This is a very universal plugin. Uh, this Platinum guy, this is the native to Apple one and it is awesome on everything. Next, Type R, okay? So this is a really famous one. This is the Studio VCA. This is an emulation of the Focusrite Red 3. Originally, it was a dual compressor. Uh, this is, again, another one that is really famous for its transparent compression. Uh, its ability to maintain a natural sound, even when pushing the compression hard, is pretty amazing. This emulation is fully discreet and balanced, meaning it's very clean sounding and doesn't color the sound like other analog compressors. The Studio VCA also works really great if you want to drop it into your master channel output, um, and use it as a bus compressor in GarageBand. It's really great for that. Also, I use it a lot on bass, vocals, and guitars uh, because it does have a really fast and tight response. Um, really great for bass, I think, really. Personally, I use this on bass often. So what you should understand is basically, this is the Focusrite compressor. Let's keep going down the list because we got more to do. All right, so let's see, Type U. Okay, here we go. The Type U compressor is an emulation of the Universal Audio 1176 Blackface compressor. Renowned for lending its character and punches some of the greatest recordings in history, the 1176 is a favorite among producers and engineers. Its lightning fast attack and release times are ideal for taming drums, enhancing bass or guitars, and bringing vocals to the front of the mix. This is a really great one if you really want like really poppy in the front of the mix vocals. Remember this, the Type U compressor in GarageBand is amazing. Really, really distinctive sound, even when it's not compressing because of its unique circuitry. Um, some people, this is another one, I will just sometimes turn on and not run the compressor and just listen to how it sounds. Um, you'll see, you can just turn this on and turn the threshold all the way down. If you turn this on and off, you will hear a little bit of analog warmth come back or come into your recordings. Type U compressor, really, really good. The last one on the list here, the VCA. This is my personal favorite of all of the compressors. This is the one that I always drop into my master channel output on GarageBand. This is emulating the legendary SSL G bus compressor. Based on the renowned master bus center compressor of the SSL 4000G console, the SSL bus compressor excels at making mixes bigger, more powerful, and punchy while also enhancing cohesion and clarity. Prized by top engineers for its ability to glue tracks together, the SSL G bus compressor is ideal for adding punch to drums and percussion or taming piano dynamics. However, its real magic shines when loaded on bus tracks, right? So in GarageBand, if we drop this into the master channel output, it will give you this amazing glue. This is where it really shines is in that master bus. Uh, it gives you that glue, it gives you energy, it really makes your mix come alive. So remember that. This is my personal favorite, the VCA. This is the SSL G compressor and this is by far one of the most famous sounds. This is the compressor that you really hear a lot. And especially if you hit this one very hard with the threshold, uh, it really, really kicks ass, okay? So one thing I wanna do at this point, now we, we've been looking at GarageBand the whole time and you've looked at this list right here a ton of times, I wanna take you over to Logic and I wanna show you exactly that I have the same exact list in Logic, all right? So just like in GarageBand, I'm gonna click on the compressor and you can see I get the whole image, but if I come here, and I go to here, boom, look at that. Same exact list that is inside of GarageBand, okay? Um, so yeah, same exact tools, but obviously as you saw in the images before and now you can see that uh, we have a little bit more control inside of Logic. I wanna go back to GarageBand and show you guys how to get this input gain control back into your compressors. Really simple little trick, let me show you. So if I come down here to my list of plugins, I'm just gonna drag this one down. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go all the way down to utility and gain. 
and boom, there you go. You have gain control over the signal going into the compressor. So if your recordings are a little bit too low, uh, you can now turn it up, or if they're too high, you can turn it down, or if you really want to slam the compressor extra hard, this is what you're going to do. You can just load this gain control in and uh, get that functionality back into your compressor, which is awesome. So you guys, if you have actually watched the video all the way to the end, let me just say thank you so much for watching. I hope you were educated and interested in this video. This is one of the big mysteries in GarageBand because you don't get the graphic interface as much. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to let you guys know that you have amazing, amazing compressors at your fingertips. Some of the most famous compressors at your fingertips in GarageBand for free because that's awesome. And uh, so anyway, you guys, if you made it to this point in the video, thank you. Please hit that subscribe button. Please hit the thumbs up like button and you know, that notification bell and all that stuff. And in general, thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Peace and love.